So first of all, thanks for joining the webinar. And it's about uh, majoring in biological sciences at Sai University. Uh, uh, and let me introduce the panelists first. So we have Dr. Toriti Subarao, uh, who heads the biological sciences department at Sai University. Uh, he's also the uh, director for Cent Center for Research, Innovation and Collaboration and Policy at the university. So uh, Dr. Subarao has 34 years of experience uh, at the Baba Atomic Research Center, you know, also known as BARC at Kalpakam. And he has worked in, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, all, uh, all uh, you know, uh, parts of uh, uh, Department of Biology, Microbiology, which includes basic applied and molecular microbiology. Yeah. So he holds a PhD in marine biotechnology. And he also has a doctorate of science in biotechnology domain. Uh, and he has received various awards. Uh, to name a few, uh, he has been awarded Meritorious Contribution Award uh, from National Association of Corrosion Engineers, uh, you know, which is also known as NAC USA. Uh, for his uh, R and D in marine microbial corrosion, he's also awarded um, uh, you know a fellows honor award from AMP uh, for uh, you know uh, from which is also known as Association of for Materials and Protection and Performances, right? So a uh, 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 warm welcome, sir. And all along with uh, uh, Dr. Subara, we have uh, Dr. Manav Bala, uh, who was assistant professor at the Department of Biological Sciences at Sai University. Uh, uh, Mano, Dr. Manobala has eight years of experience in the field of biotechnology, and she has worked across the domain, including uh, medical devices, peptide uh, therapeutics, and biofilms. She has done her postdoctoral uh, research from Indian Institute of Technology in uh, Delhi. Uh, she's also a university gold medalist and has several publications in various, uh, you know, international reputed journals. Notably, she has as a, a patent has been filed for her, uh, you know, de novo novel peptide sequence against pathogens. Uh, a warm welcome, um, and uh, I think with this, uh, I, I I leave the uh, you know uh, to Doctor uh, Subarao, uh, or to user. Thank you, Nilay, uh, <clears throat> for the introduction. And I also welcome all the students who have joined this webinar. Yeah, we'll go ahead. Uh, uh, welcome, students. Um, I thought of sharing with you about. Uh, the importance of biological sciences um, as we go ahead in the 21st century and also <clears throat> highlight to you about uh, what possibilities of uh, biological sciences you can experience at Sai University. And I have my colleague, uh, uh, Dr. Manabala, who will be briefing you about the, uh, the type of courses we offer uh, as part of undergraduate education. <clears throat> so, I will just uh, share with you a presentation on uh, the importance of biological sciences um, and then try to introduce to you the subject in such a way that uh, uh, you can also uh, foresee what are the opportunities you can uh, look in in biological sciences and we can share in some interactive questions uh, in this context. Um, so Nalai, I'll go ahead with the uh, sharing the pre presentation. Uh, yes, sir, you can. You. <clears throat> yeah, it's visible. So I would like to share the, the point that now biological sciences is a transdisciplinary uh, subject. And then how do we approach uh, in this transdisciplinary is the objective of this presentation. And then um, gone are the, those days where you have conventionally been uh, focusing on the uh, on the topic, like uh, if you say biological sciences was divided as bot bi botany and zoology, that was the convention earlier, uh, a few decades ago. Now slowly that has transformed to uh, <clears throat> biotechnology, microbiology, and then um, like undergraduate degree in life sciences, which includes uh, a mixture of all. So now if you look at the 
arts and science uh, scenario um, it is the an opportunity that gives the student to discover or in uh, exploring topics of forefront of mankind and to also uh, reinforce a scientific pers perspective actually this is what actually the educational system is uh, turning towards uh, so we will look about that um, in detail so now you may have a question on why liberal arts and science education is needed uh, actually uh, a degree in this will prepare you uh, not only to make a living but also a life so this is what actually and for the educational concept will look and this is what the new educational policy of government of india also wants so you can explore uh, the studies uh, in arts humanities uh, social sciences environmental sciences uh, computer science or mathematics you can all combine these interests and talents into a unique education this is where actually uh, Sai University stands. Uh, <clears throat> top of all other universities which could not able to provide this kind of uh, a, a mix, student-centric education. So now, uh, if you look at some of the benefits uh, of doing an undergraduate degree, uh, in arts and science, particularly if you can choose uh, a BSc in biological sciences or a BSc honors in biological sciences, it's a flexible degree. And as a result, when you graduate and come out, it will appeal to the employees. And then any employer can train such students quite easily. And then and then if you look at, you, you will gain the ability to communicate ideas, mm -hmm. analyze information, data, work in teams and solve problems. This is what actually this liberal education will inculcate in you. So communicating your ideas, analyzing information, adapting to new technology and professional trends is what actually is the profession as part of any student who would like to go out and then look for a, a professional career. So now if you look at uh, uh, many things which were told earlier, CERN, I think you might have heard about it. It is the European Council for Nuclear Research, uh, where world-class fundamental physics research uh, is being done. So, so they motivate uh, the students and the scientists there uh, to understand nature, life, and the universe. This is what actually CERN does. And uh, now you can understand the importance of uh, how the origin of life has happened, how the life molecules have been formed and then uh, henceforth. And then uh, to look at Al Albrecht Dürer's book um, on growth and form, uh, it actually shows some of the first drawings and woodcut maps of stars and constellations actually. And then uh, it, these were made into generations of scientific textbooks and it has inspired educators, scientists, artists and then Thomson's work on mathematical biology. So you may be surprised to know that digital biology is evolving now. So we don't know where this will take us, uh, which is cutting across disciplines over centuries and then getting evolved. So you might have also heard about full scope. Uh, it is a microscope which costs less than a dollar, which is created on the principle of uh, Japanese origami art. And this low cost microscope uh, that eases 
has transformed the impact in teaching in many developing and underdeveloping countries. So the, if you look at the images below uh, using this full scope, uh, these were all being observed uh, and then recorded like this. This is the onion peel, which is stained and then observed. Uh, likewise, many other things. Then uh, the intersection of art and science through time uh, is being shown in this uh, wonderful uh, 18th century uh, structure. It is the world's architectural marvel called La Sagarda Familia. Actually, this was the architect got impressed with the geometric features found in nature. That is the unique branching of tree columns and then seashells like curves and designed this physical structure of this particular church. And this is where actually the term biomimetics. Actually, if you look at how many of the sciences which are being getting evolved are based upon biomimetics. And then uh, likewise, some of my research itself, when we looked into these patterns which are there on the seashells, which can be impressed, I mean, taken as an impression on uh, any polymeric surface. Um, why is because on these uh, microstructural modifications on the seashells will help them keeping them clean, actually. This is where actually most of my work, which I did at Kalpakam, where we use seawater for cooling the uh, nuclear power plant. Um, there we could finally now understand that we, we go ahead with biomimetic applications. We can prevent the settlement of organisms in the cooling systems, provided that we provide this kind of uh, micro patterns into the cooling structural materials or pipes, etc. Now, to look at biological sciences, this schematic illustration will tell you, uh, starting from the atoms to amino acids to proteins, and then the viruses, chloroplast, plant and animal cells, frog egg, human egg. Likewise, the sizes, if you can see, the largest is the blue whale. Uh, <clears throat> and then we have the limitations of these, uh, like with human high, you can see only the frog eggs or the human egg also. But you need a light microscope to see most of the bacteria and then the internal organs, etc. And you need an electron microscope to see the viruses and then uh, protein structures, etc. And then if you look at uh, life science, it starts with the uh, molecule. That is the biochemical constituent of a cell, which will combine to form an organelle, mm -hmm. and these organelles will result in a cell, which is a functional unit. A group of cells form the tissue, and then they differentiate into organs and the organ systems, and finally, a single individual organism. Subsequently, a group of organisms will come, will result in population and then into a community, then this community living in the environmental system gives the ecosystem. And finally, the whole world we live is called as a biosphere. So this is how, uh, in a, a brief nutshell, that I can explain about uh, the life on this planet Earth. So now if you look at the biological discoveries that have revolutionized life sciences, it has begun with uh, Darwin's theory of evolution, 
which focuses on the elimination of inferior, inferior species and then the natural selection finally. And then came the discovery of antibiotics, which has revolutionized the uh, human health uh, system. And now even today you can find newer and newer antibiotics being discovered. And then you have the HeLa cells. So these were the cells that have provided the scientific research to understand the development of cancer. And then uh, it has completely changed the molecular cell biology. And then you have the discovery of uh, DNA, which has resulted in the development of uh, recombinant DNA technology, molecular biology, biotechnology, bioinformatics, whatever we call them. And then you have uh, this transformation of uh, genetic information into the small bacterial cells, which has resulted in understanding the recombinant technology and also getting a new variety of organisms, which we term them as genetically modified organisms. And then you have polymerase chain reaction. I think all of you are quite familiar with the PCR study now. COVID has given us the understanding of this technology, which almost completely uh, brought in a sea change in the molecular biology program. And then uh, this green fluorescent protein which is present in the jellyfishes. Actually, this protein has been uh, uh, sequenced and then the gene has been now cloned into a variety of uh, bacteria, microorganisms to understand the expression of genes which have been transformed. And likewise, a variety of other uh, fluorescent molecules have also been, added, been discovered which have now made it quite easy to understand the functioning of various cellular organelles. Uh, <clears throat> and um, if you have heard about cloning, uh, this is the Dolly and her surrogate mother. So Dolly was a significant biological breakthrough because it has demonstrated that a full separate embryo with uh, properly expressed cells of all types could be cloned and resulted in this small lamb. So these uh, technologies are now helping to clone the extinct animals uh, whose DNA is now available or re resurrect them from the frozen tissues which have been discovered in the holes. And then also you might have heard about stem cell, cell therapy. So it is now uh, revolutionizing the medical uh, treatment actually in the context of uh, many chronic diseases or uh, genetically acquired uh, deficiencies as part of uh, many such abnormalities which we are seeing. So this new process of creating a pluripotent stem cells, means a stem cell which is pluripotent means you can transform it into any type of cell which I have described here. So you can create your own art from the stem cells, you can create the lungs, the brain. Now you may have the doubt that if this is possible then uh, why we need to go for transplantation and etc. So these have been now been discovered, but we don't know how much time it will take for the lung tissue to get functionalized into a, a differentiated organ. All this needs a lot of discoveries. Likewise, uh, virtual reality and rapid prototyping 
Yeah, it's becoming increasingly accessible and it's becoming an inexpensive technique in understanding uh, medicine and biological, I would say, at molecular biological approaches. And then ultimately now is the era of genomics and proteomics. Genomics is the study of organism's complete genome, that is its uh, composition, the hereditary information. And that has provided us a lot of opportunity and scope. Likewise, the proteomics, understanding the proteins, particularly their structure and functions, is providing us in helping in discovering new drugs or in understanding the disease metabolisms, etc. And likewise, metagenomics, that means uh, without the culturing of uh, organisms, you can extract the, the DNA from the cells and then you can go ahead with uh, the DNA from any sample, soil, water, and then you can go for using the metagenomic approach to understand uh, and then relate using the available library on how this is helping us in understanding new organisms. Likewise, bioinformatics is a great opportunity now where actually all the data which, biological data which is now mostly often DNA and amino acid sequences is now required and then it is computer science, chemistry, biochemistry and all these subjects are being amalgamated into this bioinformatic technology. Then you have 3D printed organs now, uh, particularly in the context of uh, skin printing and then also uh, small uh, like nasal or ear uh, synthesis is being demonstrated, but uh, still a lot has to be uh, achieved in this. And then leave apart from 3D printing, now 4D printing has come up, uh, which influences the external energy input, such as temperature and other factors in printing the tissues or anything. And you have 5D printing, which is a new branch of additive manufacturing, actually. All these have biology, engineering, and computer science linked together. And then the latest development is synthetic biology. That means how can I synthesize a particular product with a minimal genetic composition and then give me the product of my choice? That is what actually is synthetic biology. It also has the inputs from a variety of subjects you can see. So now that uh, you can't have any single uh, subject, but you need to have what I was describing in the title itself, a transdisciplinary approach towards understanding the biological phenomena. Likewise, you can also now trigger the single cells to grow into granules and then use them. This growth can, have, can be achieved using this bioreactor of and then you can do wonders, actually. You can say you can create designer granules of your choice and then use it for a variety of pollutant treatment, actually. Likewise, this organism, Dinococcus, is radiation resistant, which is having a four uh, round cells fused together. And it grows like this with time uh, and then this is been stained using fluorescent dyes and then recorded using a fluorescence microscope. And this is the one which is having the green fluorescent protein gene we need. So you can directly view under a confocal laser microscope or fluorescence microscope. So this organism can provide us the radiation tolerance and also help us in the treatment of uh, radioactive waste. And this organism can withstand up to 15,000 degrees. Now, I need to explain to you 
six gray is enough to kill a human. So now you can understand how robust and strong this bacterium is. Likewise, if you want to look at the environmental impact of mega power projects, like this is the Kulam nuclear power plant, which generates 2000 megawatts of electricity. And it draws seawater through this dike, which is about 1.25 kilometers in length. Nothing like you can say it is a swimming pool, and from through which the water is drawn into the cooling system, and the water takes the heat from these condensers or heat exchangers and goes back into the sea. Now, to understand the phenomena, you need to measure this temperature and other physical parameters using geoinformatics. You can create these kind of plots which will show how the heated water is being uh, dispersed into the water, in the natural water, natural waters. And at what distance it becomes the normal temperature of the coastal waters. So this is also helps us in understanding the uh, impact of uh, heat as a pollution. Thank you. With this information, I just thought of sharing the kind of interest we can have in biological sciences. There are plenty. And then uh, if you have any questions as part of this, we can discuss later on. After my colleague Manobala presents to you about the kind of courses we offer in the uh, BSc in biological sciences degree at Sai University. Thank you. Manabala, you, you can go ahead. Yeah. Yes, yes. Fine. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the overview. Um, so, uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, I appreciate the students' interest in uh, taking a biological science courses. And I'm here to uh, give you an embankment on the detailed uh, exploration of the biological sciences courses that we offer at Sai University. So as you have heard from uh, Professor Subha Rao, so biological sciences is a study of all forms of life, including plants, animals, environment, microbes, ecology, and much more. So it's a very dynamic field. And uh, this study or in this field offer you a very unique lens through which you can see the world with a better understanding and also help the humans and also the society. <clears throat> As you can see from Sir's presentation, it's a field where there is a lot of breakthroughs that occurs regularly. For example, the vaccines that we produced for COVID, plant-based meats, meat production that is also in uh, progress where they grow uh, plant-based meat in uh, labs. And the people are moving towards biofuels for their vehicles. So these are the areas where as a biologist we can uh, contribute. And uh, this can uh, diversify across various sectors and can serve both the human and the environment. So importantly, staying updated on this uh, current research and the prospects of biological sciences is important as a student and keeping all these things in mind. And we have uh, devised a curriculum at Sai University, so which, is, uh, uh, which gives you a glimpse and overview of all the biological sciences courses, uh, which uh, can give you a well-rounded understanding of the sciences. So quickly, I will share my screen and uh, let's go ahead. So is my screen visible? Ah, uh, yes, doctor, it's visible. Yeah. Yes, yes. Thank you. So at Sai University, uh, at, under the uh, undergraduate level, we have a BSc Biological Sciences program. So one is BSc Biological Sciences, which is a three-year program. Another one is a, B, a BSc Honors uh, in Biological Sciences, which is a four-year program where the final year will be a uh, yeah, totally research-based uh, approach. So three plus one. So that uh, combines the four-year, which can award you BSc Honors in Biological Sciences. So uh, the first year, uh, we will have some foundational courses as we are uh, liberal and uh, 
an interdisciplinary approach to all of our subjects. So this is a first year of foundational courses like the frontiers, uh, global challenges, writing and communication, critical thinking, and other uh, few law-based courses like Indian Constitution, uh, Liberty and Artistic Appreciation, Environmental Sustainability, and Economics. So these are the foundational courses that are common for all the uh, students across disciplines. So this has to be completed first. And then uh, we'll have the uh, second year and third year uh, biological sciences courses where you'll have a deep dive of all the biological courses. So starting with uh, botany, zoology, and biotechnology, we have some advanced courses like cell biology, cell physiology, genetics, ecology, environmental biotechnology, microbiology, molecular biology, and bioinformatics. So these are the uh, courses that will be spread across the second and third year of your uh, study of biological sciences as a major. So if you uh, chose biological sciences as a major, so these are the uh, courses that you have to go through. So apart from this, we have practicals for all of these uh, courses as well, uh, including uh, basic botany, zoology, and uh, advanced techniques like molecular and uh, microbiology uh, practicals also. So these practicals also go hand in hand with the uh, topics that are being taught. So you'll have a practical exposure uh, along with the theories that you can have a better understanding. So we have a very good established lab with all the basic uh, amenities to carry out all the experiments and the research pertaining to uh, this uh, uh, basic uh, subjects like microbiology, molecular genetics, and as well environmental biotechnology subjects. So apart from this, when you have uh, summer breaks, uh, which comes around two and a half months, so students are encouraged to take up uh, uh, summer internship programs across uh, research institutions and other central institutions. So we have MOU signed between uh, 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 important and other top institutions across Chennai and other areas as well. So students are encouraged to take up summer internship programs. And... Uh, Apart from this, so this includes the first year and second year of biological sciences courses when you have a biology, a biological science as a major. So this will come around 120 credits. So you have to satisfy 120 credits if you are doing a BSc course. So if it's a BSc honors course, you have to satisfy a 144 credit requirement. So then um, there is an option of cho choosing a minor subject. So minor subject comes into picture when you have a secondary interest apart from uh, the biological sciences. When you want to explore still more ahead of and away from biological sciences, you can choose these minor subjects. So the minor subjects that we offer are uh, cognitive neurosciences, communication, computer science, uh, philosophy, politics, sustainability, economics, international relations and history literature, mathematics, physics, and uh, psychology. So uh, depending on your interest, if you have any secondary interest and you want to uh, widen your uh, uh, knowledge, you can choose this as uh, minors. So minor will have a separate uh, credit requirements apart from the uh, major subjects. So it will have around 16 to 32 uh, credits that you have to satisfy to have a, a minor in a particular subject. That uh, varies depending on the choice that you make. So st students have different choices, like some ch take uh, major in uh, biological sciences and some prefer uh, uh, minor in uh, international relations and some go with uh, uh, major in biological sciences and minor in uh, cognitive neuroscience. So that uh, depends on your interest. And uh, as you start uh, venturing into biological sciences, you will understand your interest and you can explore this area as well in a, in a wider uh, uh, perspective. So this overall structure, the structural courses that we offer in uh, SAI University pertaining to biological sciences uh, will give you an overall and a dynamic approach to biological science. And apart from your major domain, you can uh, have a, a leg and a swim dive into your uh, other uh, minor courses as well. So this is uh, from our side. Thank you. Yes, Nala, I'm done from my side. Um, yeah, uh, thanks, Dr. Uh, Pamela. I think, uh, yeah, uh, so, uh, so participants, if you have any uh, questions or anything to ask or any specific questions, uh, you can always post us a QA and a in the chat box. So uh, I think the professors will take it. So it's a time for Q&A. And probably after the Q&A, let me uh, you know, walk you through how to apply if you're really interested. 
So any questions uh, 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 regarding, uh, you know, biological sciences? Yeah, I think we have a question. So, yeah, okay. Please tell more about Sai University. Uh, sir, uh, would you like to, you know, elaborate the university? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, let me tell you, Sai University is having uh, three schools, School of Arts and Science, wherein all you have, whatever has been described by my colleague has been listed um, in various arts and science programs. Uh, it's an undergraduate um, degree which has been offered. And then you have a School of Computing and Data Science, where you have been given a BTEC in Computer Science, and data science, or you can also have a combination of both BTEC in computer science and data science. Yeah. And then you have a school of law where you have the BLLB five year integrated law degree program for a, after your plus two. And then also we have a postgraduate program in LLM and then also in public policy. So these are the uh, various opportunities. But the permutation and combinations which uh, the Sai University offers in the context of students' interests are quite wide. Like, for example, uh, we have students who have taken computer science as a major and also biological sciences as a minor subject. Or you can have major as data science and then biological sciences and economics. Or you can have data science, economics, and mathematics combination so that it has it gives you an edge when you leave out uh, with a, a degree into the professional world. And then uh, if you wish to go ahead with the four-year uh, BSc honor degree uh, and quite serious about research, uh, on the fourth year uh, of, for example, I say uh, BSc honors in biological sciences, you will be doing almost a, a one-year research work, which includes uh, some basic research methodologies and then other instrumentation methodology courses, and then a uh, lot of experimental work in understanding a particular topic of your interest. And then uh, you can also have a combination of uh, uh, what is called as uh, research with uh, developing like algorithms for any uh, protein structure identification or in bioinformatic tool development. There is opportunity for uh, such kind of transdisciplinary approaches to, to do undergraduate research. Uh, and then you are eligible to directly do a, a PhD without a post-graduation degree. So this is all based upon the the new educational policy which the uh, government of India has uh, and then the university's grants commission has uh, been designed actually. <clears throat> I hope you have answered uh, most of the things. Yes, sir. You still have any query, uh, please. Uh, yes, sir. sir uh, there is one more question. So how long will each concept take to teach under the major, for example, molecular or microbiology? Like I think semester-wise they are asking. Yeah. Like, for example, I will tell you, if you join uh, uh, in the first year, you will be having, uh, for the first semester, you will be having foundation courses. Apart from that, uh, basic biology courses are also offered. You can choose. That's based upon that in a semester, you need to have a minimum of 18 to 20 credits, actually. So if you want to follow the new education policy, then you need to have in each semester 20 credits. So that uh, apart from the compulsory foundation courses, you can choose any other course which you feel like uh, you would like to explore. And then uh, in the next semester, the second semester, uh, there are also some uh, compulsory courses which will be offered. And apart from that, you can uh, concentrate on choosing your major and then taking the courses which you wish to uh, link them towards the credits. And coming to the second year, that is the third semester, 
you have the full choice of choosing the major and then go ahead with the the courses which are offered in the major like for example uh, if you are in the third semester the biological sciences program will offer you four courses minimum four courses uh, which are linked to the major uh, in biological sciences a couple of them can also be used as a, a minor subject actually in the in the case you want to choose it as and coming to the fourth semester you will have a again another four courses so and then finally by the end you will be able to complete the required 56 credits which we have listed and along with the practicals together and with the foundation courses you could be able to achieve the required minimum credits which have to be um, satisfied as part of UGC's recommendation. And if you wish to go ahead with the fourth year, you will do some courses in the research methodology, etc. And then also you will go ahead with the typical biology experimental work, which will be designed based upon the uh, total credits which will be needed to offer you a PSC on a degree. So if you if I tell one course like molecular biology, it is a four credit course um, and then it covers all the basic and applied aspects of molecular biology. And then the practical will have two credits because there is an extra time being used in that study and then that will include uh, the basic molecular biology tools which you can use uh, to go ahead in understanding the genome or the proteome of an organism. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, uh, sir. I think uh, one more uh, question. So, uh, uh, so what would be the career options immediately after uh, uh, undergraduate uh, uh, you know, in biological sciences, what would be the roles? And second, if in case we are opting for, uh, uh, you know, postgraduate studies mm -hmm. after uh, biological sciences, uh, what is the scope and what are the courses they can pursue? Yeah. So now if you take biological sciences as a major, you can choose one subject as a minor, which you can, it can be psychology or neuroscience based on your interest, or you can choose computation, I mean, it's computer science or uh, data science. Now, biology with the computer science or data science will help you in fetching all the software jobs where all the big data, that is data analytics, is the one which is now um, has a lot of scope in uh, getting uh, good job opportunities. This is the one angle or if you wish to go ahead with the bsc honors degree with research you can go to a pharma company where you will be more of advantages compared to the other conventional bsc um, biology students and then uh, further if you wish to go want to do a pg then with the three year BSc Biological Science, you are eligible to write the National Biotechnology Common Entrance Test, which will, uh, if you qualify, you will be get you will get a fellowship, also an admission into the based upon your rank into the one of the the good biotechnology schools in various universities throughout India. <clears throat> So that is with the PG, or you can go with the uh, PG in biotechnology, MSc in biotechnology, or you can go with the MSc in uh, bioinformatics. So there are now many new courses also that are being designed based upon the needs in the market. So those can be accordingly chosen and then we will also guide you which will be the right uh, way uh, you, you need to go ahead as we evaluate you uh, then we can advise you which is the best for you also yeah yeah uh, i think uh, one more 
question sir from the audience i think uh, what would be the practical exposure we get uh, from labs in science must you so as uh, my colleague manobala mentioned uh, we have the basic botany zoology and biotechnology practicals which will give you the uh, the basic understanding of these uh, three uh, subjects followed by a little advanced practical training in microbiology and molecular biology uh, and then also in bioinformatics so bioinformatics is nothing but you will be using a variety of uh, um, software tools to study the sequence of amino acids or sequence of nucleotides and then come about in understanding the phenomena of a particular disease or the function of a particular protein and like that so these will be your core as part of practical is concerned so i have uh, we have designed in such a way that the student will have a basic practical understanding in uh, botany zoology and biotechnology before it well into the advanced molecular tools uh, which and then the basic uh, and applied microbiology so this is how you can practically be trained because with the kind of experience i have i have seen that if you orient towards this kind of exposure in practicals uh, i think um, and then if it is consolidated with a fourth year bsc honor degree uh, in biological sciences particularly oriented towards the research i think uh, you'll come out as a, a useful product for any good research or to any r and d institution uh, or any pharma a new pharmaceutical company r and d unit so this is how uh, the practical is been uh, designed at sai university thank you professor so i think that's the questions we have received and if in case uh, or uh, i think uh, since we are in the verge of completion of the webinar so one, one last time a quick check up on if there is any questions from the audience fatima akshay deepan geeta manasa Rohini, if, if there is any questions, you can raise your hand. You can di directly ask yourself, or you can post it in Q and A. Yeah, I think that would be it. So finally, I think uh, so. Uh, so I think there are some of the uh, participants who are already in the pipeline of applying. Produced and some have applied as well. So, if, if for new students who are uh, planning to apply, so Sai University, I think, sir said that we are uh, we are into liberal education space. Uh, provide undergraduate and postgraduate studies. We're located in Chennai, Payanur near Mahabalipuram, and uh, uh, so we offer uh, you know a, a, a sixteen a total sixteen of undergraduate programs across School of Arts and Sciences, Computing, Literature, and Law. So, if you're planning to apply, I, I'm I'm putting it out. Uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 apply link. Uh, so uh, you can go, you register yourself and our admissions team will get back to you. And the process will be like, uh, you, uh, once you finish the online application form, uh, which will charge around rupees 500, it's an online, complete online form. And post application, uh, you'd be asked to, uh, you know, appear for any of the national entrance exam. If you have not appeared, we have our own entrance exam test, which is called Sayu Cat. Which you will receive after the application, um, where you will be, uh, you know, assessed on very basic level of questions on, uh, you know, uh, high school, uh, topics, and uh, after this you will have a SAYU personal interaction, uh, uh, where you will get to interact with either faculty or senior counselors or directors, uh, just to understand your uh, portfolio, and uh, uh, post this you will be receiving a, a, you know, um, a decision on offer, and you will be offered admissions at SAYU University. So I think uh, the fees and scholarship, there are a lot of fees and uh, you know, scholarship which we offer uh, for meritorious students that you can always uh, you know explore uh, on our website, which again, I'm posting the link in the chat box. If in case any anything, uh, uh, any queries regarding uh, admissions or uh, you know biological sciences, you can always write to us and you can find the contact information from uh, the website uh, contact details. Yeah, uh, we would be happy to assist. And once again, uh, thank you all. Uh, I hope there is no questions. Uh, uh, I think uh, thank you, Professor uh, both uh, Dr. Uh, Toliti and Dr. Uh, Manopala. Uh, 
it was it was a wonderful thing and a, uh, a perfect well rounded session informative session thank you thank you nellai yeah thank you thank you thank you, thank thank you. you. yeah thank you. thank you all the students who have joined also all the best for you